Okay, Matt Bennett here. I'm ready to do this Facebook Live. This is good times. Um, just figuring out how to do these Facebook Lives, learning how to do it. I'm excited to be here and to um, minister a little bit from the scriptures on the topic of revival. We've got just a couple minutes together. So we want to make this everything it can be for all those who will be tuning, turning into this and watching the video later and all this sort of stuff works. I am here in my apartment in the Big Apple, a few blocks from, the, um, from both the Flatiron Building. You actually can see it behind me. See, I got a picture of the Flatiron Building, which you can also see out of my window over here, but I'm not going to turn the camera. And then you got the Empire State Building on the other side. So I'm right here in Midtown, uh, Midtown South here in the Big Apple, a city that needs the love of God. Um, everywhere needs the love of God, but New York is a city that needs the love of God. So I uh, just had some friends left. Here we had our Monday uh, men's uh, prayer for revival time, had a great time. And we watched something that was really interesting. We watched the uh, revival account of the Asbury revival of 1970. I bet this is on YouTube. I haven't checked, but a friend gave me this. Thank you, Uncle Bob, as I call him, for sending this. But uh, uh, an incredible account um, by Dennis Kinlaw, the president there, of what the Lord did. I recommend watching that. It's stirring. It's, I think, 37 minutes long. Uh, but we're going to look briefly uh, today at the most famous passage on revival in the Bible, 2 Chronicles 7.14. I'm going to read right before it, and then uh, we'll talk about it just a little bit. It says, Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So an incredibly important uh, passage. And you see all the, the requisite things in there about confessing our sin, about praying, about humbling ourselves. That's all uh, incredibly important. And the Lord responds, the Lord has laid out what moves him, what um, encourages him to respond. He doesn't have to do anything, but he's laid out in his scriptures uh, what, uh, what we do that makes an impact on him, and these things do. And I want to make a difference, a point of difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Some sometimes wonder, well, does this apply today because we're in the New Covenant? And the answer to that is all the more. And the reason why is um, when Jesus came, because Jesus is the perfect sacrifice, number one, unlike the Old Testament um, sacrifice, and because um, he was the perfect um, priest, unlike the Old Testament priests, um, his sacrifice was more powerful. And uh, as you know, there's no longer any need to have these regular sacrifices. Um, because of the blood of Jesus, we're able to draw near to God more closely than ever before. Under the Old Covenant, one of the big promises was territorial integrity for the nation of Israel. That was promised them as well as a bunch of other things. But the main uh, promise of the new covenant, in addition to salvation, is the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to move, to do things, to bring blessing, to open doors, to um, uh, bring change in people's lives. And we see that in many places in the New Testament. I'll mention one of these places in Luke 11. Luke 11 is this famous passage where it says we are to ask and we're to seek and we're to knock. We're going to continue to come after God and to pursue him. And at the end of this, we're told to pray God with great impudence. It says this is what happens when we seek him with this kind of impudence or this kind of persistence. It says, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give um, the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So here you have this promise of an increased measure of the Holy Spirit here in the New Covenant. And this is what you see in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 2. Uh, after Jesus um, goes and ascends to the Father for 10 days, the church is praying and praying and praying. And what happens in Acts chapter 2? The Spirit is poured out in power. Thousands of people come to faith that day as they hear the preaching of Peter. It's absolutely extraordinary. Um, the power of God changed the disciples. And all through the book of Acts, you see this filling of the Holy Spirit that happens. This is a promise in the new covenant as a fruit of us seeking him. So when we read these passages in the Old Testament about um, seeking, asking, um, um, humbling ourselves before God, 
Um, the new covenant doesn't take away the need to seek the Lord. What it does is, is that it changes and, and makes more powerful the impact when we do seek the Lord. It brings the blessings of the new covenant instead of the blessings of the old covenant because we're in the new covenant. That is the great promise and great strength of um, this passage for us today. So in all these stories we read about God intervening in extraordinary ways in the Old Testament, First and Second Chronicles and other different ways, what we can do and how we can think about that today is that all the more since we're reconciled to God, all the more since our sins have been forgiven fully and completely in Christ, all the more since uh, we have been adopted as his sons, can we expect the Lord to move in power to respond to our prayers? And this is what we see in history. It's what we saw in Asbury in 1970. And you should definitely look this up in, um, on YouTube and uh, watch that video. You see how the people pressed into God and humbled themselves and pray like crazy. And you saw God do some extraordinary things. And many other places nationwide were touched because of this. This was a smaller revival compared to other revivals that had happened in church history. But it's still worth noticing or noting because of the power. It's always the same factors that are happening. I mean, God is able and willing, desires to pour out his spirit. But there's some things that we do that make a big difference. The question is, do we have the faith to continue to seek him? Do we have the faith to continue to pray, fast, and ask him, and to respond and do whatever his spirit says? This is what we need to cultivate each other and, and encourage, encourage each other to do. This is what Day and Night, Christian Union Day and Night, is about. We with Christian Union deeply desire to see radical changes, the Spirit of God to be poured out across the whole country, to see faith arise, to see love poured out, to see the greatest revival in the history of this nation. That is our passion and desire. And others who are praying and seeking this, we can see this. The Lord responds. Uh, in the American church today, we have lost faith. We don't believe this. If we did believe this as a body, we'd be pressing in much more. And of course, there's some exceptions. There are some wonderful people. But as a large group, we just don't do this, uh, not like other countries do. Christians do, not like people have done in the history of this country have done. So this video, um, all what we're doing with Day and Night, Christian Union Day and Night, is to help um, lift up faith. Now, we also would have all-night prayer meetings from time to time um, that we would um, believe and act and respond to everything that the Lord does. Uh, a friend of mine here in New York, he um, had a, the first time he, for him to do it all night was Friday night. He, on his own, to pray all night, prayed all night for the Lord to bring power, to bring change. And he's got a regular job. He's got um, responsibilities and is married, um, but uh, he puts that kind of time in. And so many others here I know in New York who are doing that. And by God's grace, I know many of you who are watching this and watch this have done this as well. Don't lose faith. Press in. The Lord will minister, the Lord will bless, the Lord will bring change, and, and will bring power. Um, the question is, can we persevere? Can we keep going? And yes, the Lord will respond. So, as you know, Matt Bennett here with Christian Union Day and Night, and it's such a blessing to partner with friends across the country to seek the Lord. Uh, America's best days are ahead of us. Uh, we can trust and believe him. We've been down and out before in the United States, and the Lord's had great mercy on us. So we're believing him to bring this greatest revival in the nation's history. Let us press in, um, trust him, ask him to do all these wonderful things. And uh, who knows what we might do in the future through day and night. We've got all sorts of ideas, different campaigns that we may do. We uh, want to do some more moves where we're all together doing some sort of spiritual initiative. Uh, I encourage you to sign up for be part of the prayer team. We have uh, thousands, I think 5,000 or more who are join to be part of the regular prayer team. So go to um, dayandnight.org and do that. Um, share this video with your friends. Let us have a movement. Let's really build up. Let's get a lot of us kind of seeking the Lord this way. We've got some great ideas for the future of what uh, we might do in terms of um, continuing to um, call people to seek the Lord and to promote revival. Uh, our ministry, we've got uh, several branches of it. We have a lot of our work we do on campuses. And we call that Christian Union Universities. And we, we focus on, on some of the most secular, influential campuses in the U.S. We also do work among adults and professionals here in New York City and expanding to other cities. And then we also have day and night to reach everybody in America. So uh, much grace to you. I love you. And I thank God for you. I am going to say a prayer. So, Lord, we love, praise your great and glorious name. You are awesome. You're beautiful. You are wonderful. Help us, Lord. Meet us. Bless us. 
minister to us, strengthen us, call out the many, many Christians in this nation to seek your face and have mercy on us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. So may the Lord bless you, strengthen you. May the Lord answer every prayer that you have. May the Lord um, give you fresh fillings of his spirit as you walk with him and love him. May the Lord give you great health and open doors and joy in everything that you do. Thanks for watching this. Please share it with friends. Uh, God bless. Take care.